I didn't see you again this time either, little Peggy. <laughs> a passenger simply vanishing from an aircraft mid-flight. Does that sound possible to you? <sighs> Unbelievable. What are you doing here? Mm, this plane is going down! Fucking with my big eye, weren't you? No more messing with this puppy! I'm knocking this one out of the park! Let him go! He... vanished? Never talk to me again! Damn it. time I'll break more than one. Damn it. So hey, beginning of a new episode, we get to see this again. Go oh, good. This is a story of a man with a very strange fate. <laughs> hey. Title sequence. It's like I'm going No, actually, that comes at the end of this video. <laughs> oh my god. So, yeah, welcome to episode two. The fourth suspect Duncan, Derek, Deborah, and. Who? Another D. So, uh, we're gonna start this game, uh, in the prologue, of course. Ah. Um, so, you know, if anything looks a little off, you know, just, just call that out. Yep. Wait. What's he doing there? Um, he's wearing the Nihilist set. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure why the tie is, like, cow print. <laughs> Oh, shit. Did we not push the owl? Uh, no. No, we did not. I think that's what we had to do, right? Yeah. You always push the owl. Well, this just got kind of confusing. And creepy. Who are you, mister? I'll give you one guess as to who that is. Hey! <laughs> and you're already you? wrong. <laughs> I'm David Young. Who are you? So David's rocking the stubble, <laughs> which is a it's it's a different hairstyle what? apparently. Oh, that's a hairstyle. Um, yeah. The default when you start the game with is called rough beard, and it's like barely longer than the stubble. Let's play again. In case you're wondering why she's jumping, she doesn't want to trip on the credits here. Well, I mean, that's sensible. Yeah, it's reasonable. They're they're kind of like right there in the way. I want to know who put them there. That's kind of it's kind of rude. Yeah, it's it's a little uh, irresponsible, frankly. So here we are. For some reason, the owl wasn't on a dead deer this time. Oh, uh, what a shame. I'll, I'll count that as a, as a positive. Push the balloon. Deep crimson. Oh no. Oh, that's gone forever. Yeah, I just like this buoy <laughs> that she has not noticed is missing. Nope, she is still looking at the buoy that's not there. So we can talk to her. Mister, are you really David Young? That's my name. <laughs> you don't, don't wear it out, like kid. I <laughs> also, try not to I fall through the ice, really kid. Cool yep. Why do you have a beard like that? He forgot to shave for like half a day. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of scary. Fine, I'll put on the uh, diver's mustache next time. Oh, oh which yeah, which is a thing. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. So, uh, teleporting kid, I'm starting to think she might not be real. You know? Really? I almost died once. I mean, it's a hunch. Do you think she's real? <laughs> Uh, she looks it? real. Can we touch her? The ice on the lake just started uh, to... don't know. Maybe David's not real. 
Ooh, so maybe scared. that's the problem. Yeah, he's never been real. But my two dads saved me. My two wonderful dads. Now, she doesn't elaborate, so I'm going to let you just keep on guessing. All right. I also like that David has a little shiver animation every couple seconds. <laughs> he's kind of just swaying back and forth. There's a shiver, okay. Which I, I guess makes uh, makes the case more that he's he's real. Because he's cold. But then it also begs the question, why is he cold? Is this place that he's at real now? We're all cold on the inside. This place is real. Oh. It's just not real. Right, I, I think I I think I gotcha. So we can talk to her again. Third time's the charm. Maybe she'll say something good this time. Let's play with the family or fall through the ice. Oh, those are frozen ducks. Okay, I take back the good. That's not good at all. No, that's terrible. That's a lot of frozen ducks. Um, don't worry about the ducks too much. Uh, okay. Uh, we have a fishing buoy here. And you knocked over all the uh, thin ice signs, so we don't have to worry about thin ice. Well, here's a question for you then. Why would there be a bench on the ice oh good point so we can't we can't push an owl which I think is stupid so let's right um yeah okay yeah we're good yeah <laughs> all right five centimeters it's like two whole inches of snow how does he how does he know that he's a detective He's really good at this. <laughs> okay. Now she's going to pet the frozen duck. What are you doing here, David? I'm looking for something. My beard trimmer. <laughs> I haven't seen it in three hours. Something. <laughs> so, what is it? A lead. That will let me meet someone special. One more time. What does it look like? I don't know. Oh, well that clears it up. It? <laughs> yeah, but I'll know it when I see it. Gonna change it's the this past. duck. Duck statue? Oh. Yeah, they're not real. Can't change the past, David. Oh. <gasps> Little Peggy. You can't change the past. You do know that, don't you, David? No. I can do it. I'm going to change it. Time is always moving into the future. It's always been that way. But... You can't change the past. You just have to accept it. I belong to the past. I'm dead, David. No! I am dead. I... <sighs> I'm dead. I'm dead. I am dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Damn. Fell asleep on the toilet again. And then somehow <laughs> rolled into the bathtub. I mean, wouldn't you? Doesn't this qualify as disturbing the crime scene? Uh, not if the crime scene's three years old. Two it's years old? This way. Two years old. Or maybe he I was sleeping for a whole year. Past. Oh, God. And I fall asleep. That's a serious and coma. And why didn't anybody check on him? I end up back here. Uh, there's a cat lady. She probably can't use doors. Actually, we know she can't use doors. The very first time we saw her, she couldn't get in. That's true. <laughs> um, and Teddy, maybe he hasn't fought with his wife in like a year? Oh, well, good for Teddy. Teddy. Teddy? Teddy! You can't just expect him to be here. Get off the TV. It's really gotten late. Well, it is like 2 a.m. This belongs to the person who jumped me on the passenger flight. If this is a fragment of some sunglasses, then that narrows it down to only one suspect. And that suspect is? But is he Derek really Buchanan, the, type to the use Marshal. A stun gun? Yeah.
I mean, it's a marshal good. would have a stun gun. The piece is unfitting. Oh, they think. might. They might also have a fountain pen. Huh? <laughs> it's true. Teddy's laptop. Teddy doesn't know how to use a computer. <laughs> so we're not going to interact with the laptop because that will start the next part of the case, really. And there's a lot of stuff. It pretty much uh, time travels to the it's morning. It's the time to be playing like this. Okay. So we'll miss a lot, like Amanda sleeping on the TV. <laughs> yep. So did you get the joke? A desert box? The box says desert. Yeah. Which is like the opposite of the Amazon. Yep. <laughs> nice. Weird that the delivery is inside the apartment. Uh, a little bit, although Teddy could have moved it in. I mean, I don't get that kind of service from the mailman. No. They usually try to slam things in my mailbox, and when that doesn't work, they just throw it up the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I won't disturb her. There's nothing on TV at this time of night anyway. But my soaps! How does she stay up there? She's a cat. Not technically. She's a cat. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> My little shopper is still sleeping. <laughs> I'll leave it I like the outfits. Um, it's my favorite outfit for her because it's the thing that looks the most like normal clothing. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's just called the cowgirl outfit because obviously. Sure. Did Teddy leave the embers going? Jesus, Teddy. Um, I don't know, maybe he thought Amanda would alert people to a fire by meowing really loud. Did you just spit your gum on the fire? That's like the best place he's put it so far. <laughs> Good point. Oh, so lighting that caused those emblems to come in? Nice. Yep, that's not the only time we get a little present for doing something. Hmm. Yeah, so the dynamic of episode two is much lower key. Mm -hmm. um, even though the apartment, we don't do a whole lot of exciting stuff anyway, this, especially at night, is a lot more slowed down. What does the 65 in Swery 65 mean? The worst part about that question is there is no answer that anybody knows. <laughs> it's not when he was born. He was not. He's not that old. No, he's not. Thank others, and you too shall be thanked. God, that face. That's not how people smile. Enjoy doing what you don't enjoy, so you can do what you do enjoy. Uh, um, I guess? Hey, at least it sounds like what would be on a fortune cookie. <laughs> yeah. So we got new episode, new letters. All right. This letter is a little weird. Um, it talks about David and Forrest having promotions at like roughly the same time, but then it mentions Peggy having a sickness. Uh. And she refers to it as a gift, and it's really cryptic in this letter. Hmm. Baby? Uh, we'll have to find out. Looks like Teddy left clothing out on the, the counter again. Of course he did. And there's a little... I wouldn't call it an Easter egg, but more of like a... Not quite a product placement. See if you can find it. Samuel Adams. Not quite. Yep. <laughs> it's Daniel Adams. <laughs> does take place in Boston, after all. Yeah. So one sort of last thing we can do before we get cracking on the laptop is to go outside. At night? Yeah. The ancient Egyptians were the first to draw shapes among the stars. <laughs> so beautiful. Thank <laughs> you. 
Why is your tie bouncing, David? It's been bouncing the whole game. Have you just noticed now? I just <laughs> caught on to it. I'm just glad that Peggy's not shouting at the neighbors this time. Looking yeah, that's like that's good. Makes me feel like it's not embarrassing. Been repeating itself since long ago. Like I've met you many times. And parted with you many times. It's such a strange feeling. Me too. Like I've met you many times. And then So this, this camera angle sort of implies that he's being watched, but he's not. Right. That was just a weird, or maybe it's the pigeons, oh shit. It's those birds. They're getting sick of his shit. Is it the one with the crooked beak? <laughs> it might be. He wants revenge. Speaking of revenge, in this letter... Oh. This is when Peggy finds out that she is pregnant. Oh, look at that. It's not quite what you were thinking it was. Uh, it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. Okay. We've got we've got a lot of letters to go. <laughs> but speaking of letters, what have we been looking for? <gasps> D. That's the D that keeps on giving. <laughs> what? Nothing like 360 credits. No, that's pretty nice. So I think this here, person man? was spying on somebody and also painting them. Oh. And then maybe it escalated further than that. Oh boy. But I really appreciate when you come out here at night and there's the ambient noises. You can actually sometimes hear a car peeling out and you can constantly hear that dog barking. Nice. That's how it should be. And Teddy putting weird shit in the microwave again. <laughs> An egg which blew up. And that's why Teddy's the only one allowed to use the microwave. <laughs> So, just one last thing. So we haven't really had any tequila lately. Now nah, you gotta, you gotta drink some tequila. The first on the scene was Dr. August Oldman, the man who raised little Peggy. The shot was so great it turned his hair white overnight. According to his testimony, by the time he found Peggy, I wasn't there anymore. As luck would have it, someone had already taken me to the hospital and stuck me in the ICU. After recovering and returning home, I found him there. How did it come to this? That's with the weird voice. That's his voice. That's not a normal voice. Do you think the past can be changed? At that moment. So yeah, August is a little weird. There. Just a little. But now. And no, I didn't switch David to the hoodie just for that cutscene. <laughs> it's just what he wears. Yeah, all right. David. Seems he has no memory of the night of the incident. According to his statement, the only thing he does remember are the final words of the victim. What did she say? Look for D. D? Bet you it's D for David. <laughs> dick what because he just maybe ruined your assumption what that David might not be the D 
I never thought David was the deep. Well, you do now. <laughs> and now you don't. Nope. Nighttime is a good time for tequila. Hey, it's 2.30 a.m. somewhere. <laughs> that watch. You really do wear it every day. Thing is, I bet you didn't notice he wears a watch. Uh... I'm sure I saw it, but it didn't really occur to me to think. Yeah, you might have seen it, but did you I bought that see it? With my first no, I did not. I now you see that it's cracked. Treasure it forever. <laughs> By cracking it. Right. For good luck. So you'll come back safely to me again, my David. Tequila's really messing with you, David. So, who keeps uh, picking up the cork every time he spits it? Oh, it's already back in the bottle. Oh, it's already in there. All right. So, anywho. Probably Teddy. About that laptop. All right, let's get started. So, I believe in this... Uh, Murders detective file, real case blood. folder, whatever. Um, some of these are pictures of developers. Oh, okay. But the name slot has weird names like Trafficker Mountain and Penny and Junkie Hill. <laughs> um, and yes, that was a meat cube. Oh. Uh, we'll read about that in one of the documents later in this episode. But uh, like we said, the deaths related to real blood are really weird. Yeah. Look for D. Peggy, why did you have to be cryptic before you died? Maybe she wasn't being. Who knows? Now you gotta figure out a password? Oh boy, um... Well, it could be. <laughs> Which one's it gonna be? I think Clam Chowder. So no matter what, Clam Chowder is always going to be there. But the other two words, it's actually random. Oh, okay. There, there's something like 10 Why or 20 other words the that they put in there sometimes. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. He's using geographical profiling. BPD... A hockey rink, Diana's Cafe, the Oldman Clinical Research Lab, this apartment, and the house little Peggy grew up in. Teddy, just what the hell are you investigating? Now it's the title sequence. Oh my god, 24 minutes. Of intro. Uh, yeah, I said at the end of the video. Yep. And that's where we are. So even though we're in episode two, this title sequence does not change. It's the, it's the same. Eh. But now you're seeing things you might recognize. Yes. Because episode two is pretty radically different. Oh in terms of uh, a lot. Yeah. 